Okay guys, so just like Ashley, I am doing my top five uh, pieces, or rather top six pieces of bushcraft, favorite bushcraft gear for this year. And as always, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. So getting into this, uh, this year's bushcrafting gear, I did actually quite a bit, and of course this channel isn't completely and entirely devoted to EDC gear, though it is kind of a mixture of both bushcraft and everyday carry, because those are things that I really enjoy. So I thought I would take a look at my EDC gear, my top EDC gear for this year that I really enjoy running. So let's get this started. So the first part is, and this is a hard one to kind of really say, that this is my absolute like, or one of my top favorites because it's kind of constantly evolving and changing and moving, but my, it is definitely a top favorite and that is my PSK. Now this one, if you guys have seen already the wintertime PSK video, uh, I'll probably roll that in around here, um, <clears throat> but the winter setup video for this you guys can see, and this is a very complete, I've put a lot of time, thought, energy, money into this little kit to make it the most compact but yet highly effective EDC kit that you can really get out there right now. So that's what I've tried to accomplish with it, and I think I did a pretty good job. It covers the five C's of survivability has water purification, coffee, uh, food, and just a whole bunch of different things to really help you if you are in a survival situation out there. And of course, like I've said before, I carry this whenever I do anything out in the woods from snow machining, hiking, bushcrafting. There's a lot of adventures that both Ashley and I go on in the winter and well, year round really. And anytime I'm out in the woods, this PSK is on my belt because it's a very smart idea to have. And while I've never personally been had to had to resort to a survival kit yet I know one of my friends and one of the guys who occasionally comes on this channel his name is Aiden he has actually gotten into a survival situation before it wasn't super serious there wasn't any medical conditions to it but he was actually he and a couple other people were actually lost in the woods <laughs> and so just on a routine kind of thing that he was doing for his job. He got lost in the woods on a hike, kind of in a way. And uh, it was, it took him a couple days longer to get out of the woods than it was anticipating. He had to actually use some of his survival gear to help get water and stuff like that. So it's, it's definitely smart to have a survival kit regardless to who you are. And my friend, once again, he occasionally shows up on the channel. He's every bit as good a survival as me. And so survival situations, or bushcrafting, I should say, so survival situations can happen to anybody. So anyways, that's my PSK. And that's why it's kind of on the top is it's just constantly being carried. It really is always with me. So the next part is knives. I'm gonna go into my first knife, and uh, this is the this is not the original one that I had. You guys will know if you guys are very observant. I've actually had two uh, Allegheny knives M38s. The first one, it was pretty good. I didn't like the sheath as much, and so um, I don't remember its name. Uh, I, his name escapes me at this moment, but the owner of Allegheny, he felt so bad about just the overall kind of lacking that that knife had. So he sent me uh, a V2 or version two of the Allegheny knives M38. So that's what this little one is for those people. A couple people asked in the comments what the, that knife was in a few of the thumbnails I've rolled in, but this is an Allegheny Knives M38 V2, and so this one's actually a little bit different because um, I had the uh, V1, and the V1 was a little bit thicker and shorter overall, especially in the handle, but overall it was a little bit shorter and the handle was a little bit thicker. This one is a little bit thinner uh, overall in the handle it's a little bit wider and it's a little bit longer so the v2 is just a little bit different and of course i'm actually gonna have ashley be doing a review on this knife because she's really taken to this knife um, but when she does a review she'll hit on these points and this one of course has a way better sheath to it and this one is actually 
actually pretty cool. It has a real tree camo pattern here, and then it's just black on this side. And so it's a little bit different, but this is still a Allegheny Knives M38. And though I haven't used to put as much mileage on this one, I put a lot of mileage on my first M38, and I really loved the way the steel performed. I loved the way that you could just take this thing out in the woods. It was a really good user, and it was a very good, reliable knife that you could count on. And so this one, while I technically haven't tested it as much as the first one, I'm pretty sure because they're both by Allegheny and there's only small variations, I'm pretty sure this one's just as rock solid. So the M38 V2 is my next um, on this list. So next to that is the UGQ or Underground Quilt Company Winter Dream 11. And this one has seen a lot of use with me. I have actually really loved just playing with this tarp. I don't know, I kind of just like setting up this tarp in different shelter configurations, but I also used this um, <clears throat> for a several day extended period where I set this thing out in the middle of the woods. I went out to one of my favorite bushcrafting spots. I set it up and I set it up in just downpour and then and uh, I just left it there for a few days and left this entire rig just there for a few days. I had class, so I couldn't actually stay with the rig the entire time, but I stayed, or I did stay, sorry, but uh, I set this rig up and this thing itself, I've done long-term, like week-long tests of just downpour and it getting completely drenched. This thing is completely waterproof. It sheds water the first day, or it sheds water as well the first day as it does like the seventh day. So this is a really great tarp. I really enjoy UGQ's build quality. It's a very nice tarp that you can always count on and I've used it quite frequently for the next part that I'm about to talk to. But this one is really awesome and even just as a tarp by itself, this tarp really rocks. And you can, because it's an ASIM, you can really throw it into a whole bunch of different configurations and use it exactly how you need to. You can use it in a basic lean-to setup or you can use it as it's kind of designed to with a um, hammock. So the next part, of course, as it kind of makes sense, is a hammock. So this is a Hammock Bliss Double, and this hammock has been really, really enjoyable. I think Hammock Bliss is kind of one of those unheard of or kind of unknown companies out there, and they don't necessarily make things for bushcrafters or for survivalists. They do for ultralight backpackers, but they, they kind of make more recreational hammocks, but just because they're hammocks are marketed toward recreational senses does not mean that this isn't equally as good out in the woods and this one just like this tarp here I've ran it multi-day and I've had it up for weeks used it and <clears throat> it's been a very solid tarp or not tarp, <laughs> hammock to use and something I really enjoy especially if you're like me and you run with another person it's really nice to have a double hammock because I actually started looking and it's pretty hard to find hammocks out there that can not just weight wise but also length and just size wise hold two people comfortably and of course a hammock isn't going to be like the most comfortable thing to hold two people in but it, this one has enough size where you can have two people in it pretty comfortably and that's sitting or laying down in it so I really enjoy this hammock because its size is really nice and overall its build quality is just fine everything works on it well I've had no complaints about it whatsoever it also packs up really well and in a pretty small size pattern so next <coughs> so next is the bushcraft essentials firebox this is the lf or bush box lf and this is the large folding model and this has been a pretty fun tool to run as well i've enjoyed kind of being able to start really controlled and small fires that where if you just want to boil like a pot of water or just do something really small and you need a concentrated fire you don't want to use a whole lot of wood this is a really good way of doing that in the bush box lf is definitely my go-to for bush boxes and I've kind of covered this in others but what really attracted me to the LF was the fact that there's no pins or stakes or anything you have to mess with you just legitimately open this thing up have the first piece fall into its spot have the next piece fall into its spot and and then it's good to go it's it's completely usable and it's a very easy fast and simple setup to use and so I really do like the LF for that fact 
So last but certainly not least is probably actually, this is gonna be seen in another video that Ashley and I are gonna do, which is our favorite bushcrafting knives. But uh, this knife is definitely one of my favorite bushcrafting knives. And I think you guys can see just on how used and abused this thing looks. And if you guys have seen any of my review or just test bit footage on this thing, I have really, really abused this thing, and I've really used it hardcore, heavy duty, and just wanted to see what it was made of. And this is, of course, the Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore, and I really enjoy this thing. This is honestly a knife that I was a little bit unsure about, but once I started using it, it just took to bushcraft tasks like nothing else and uh, it really performs very well in a bushcraft setting there's very little that i could say to really improve this tool it's hard and it's heavy duty you can really rail on this thing without worrying about it breaking you can also really trust it to throw sparks off ferro rods and the edge retention is very good it is 01 tool steel so of course a lot of this patina comes from the fact that i was using it out when it was raining and i was getting it wet ish and I was kind of wiping it off but you know kind of just letting it sit there and let it get some patina because like I've said in the past a lot of people like give me a whole lot of flack for not using my knives or my knives looking brand new and so that must mean that I'm not using them but rest assured guys I do use these things quite hard and uh, I'd like to see what these knives are made of so anyways this knife has been absolutely awesome to run and I've really really enjoyed it and it's been out on quite a few outings and it's been a very trusty companion for bushcraft and even some survival practice because it's just that good <laughs> anyways guys that is my entire favorite these are my top six most favorite pieces of bushcraft gear that i got this year kind of aside from this because this has just been like a work in progress so this changes like every year but aside from that this is my most favorite gear that i got this year and that i've tested and reviewed used this year so anyways guys um there will be a review and uh, a setup video on this in the link in, in, in links in the description below i will have all of the reviews of these linked down there so if you guys want to see uh, any particular review on any of this gear or check out any of this gear in particular links will be in the description below and as always guys god bless and i'm out